Hi Gamecock fans, we're back for another edition of the GoGamecocks.com preview show. It's week two of the college football season, South Carolina ranked number six in the country. 1-0 and headed into probably the biggest game of the season. As usual. Georgia with the SEC East lead on the line. For the last two years, South Carolina has known has beaten this Georgia team but had a lot of work to do left. Not necessarily gotten it all done. The Bulldogs have bounced back this year. When you, If you look ahead and look down the line, if South Carolina can get past the Bulldogs for a fourth year straight, they should be in great shape for the SEC East title. So I would probably argue that this is a bigger game this year for South Carolina than it's been the last two or three. You've got two guys making homecomings, Connor Shaw and Mike Davis. Two-thirds of your starting backfield, or depending on the alignment, all of your starting offensive backfield are Georgia boys. You know that they'll be excited, Mike, a little more so than Connor, just because he's a little more excitable kid. <laughs> Playing in their home state, both are really looking forward to it. So there's that subplot. Then you've got what I imagine all of the TV cameras will talk about and, and, and TV analysts is Jadavian Clowney, who drew most of the attention against North Carolina for his conditioning against Georgia's offensive line, which drew a ton of attention last week for watching Clemson guys run in the backfield. Yeah, it's gonna always get a great game when USC and Georgia yeah. get together, Josh. And, and usually, you know, throughout the history of this rivalry, the winner of this game has supposedly been the one to go on to have a better season. Right. Now, whether you argue that's wins or losses or whatever, that's pretty much held true except for last year when Georgia got more wins and got to go play for the SEC right. championship instead of USC, you know, which actually won the game 35-7. to So it's always going to be a great game. It's always going to be an interesting game. And, you know, as we uh, talked before, these past two years have featured some pretty entertaining off-the-grid games where sure our predictions, not that they mean that much anyway, just, you know, were in no way come true. Two years we said low-scoring game, 45-42. Right. Last year we thought it would be another close, tightly-knit contest. Right. USC wins 35-7. to who knows what's going to be on tap in Athens this year. And you, David, you went to the Georgia Clemson game and saw it firsthand. I think a lot of people who watched it on TV <clears throat> saw some of what you saw, but you know, what, what were your impressions of A, the Bulldogs, and how they might match up with South Carolina? Well, you know, Georgia's offense, Josh, is very, very powerful. You have Aaron Murray, who's just got a, a really great arm, can you know, really direct the field and has been there for a while. And Todd Gurley, man, I mean, just an absolute beast in the backfield. The guy is so big but so fast, it's just ridiculous to try to bring him down. Yeah. And the other running back that the Bulldogs have, uh, Keith Marshall, he's no slouch either. You know, he had to play most of that game after after Gurley had a little bit of a quad problem. Uh, George did lose Malcolm Mitchell, their top deep uh, threat. Uh, you know, tore his ACL on a, on a celebration play that he to, wasn't even involved in. But they still do have Michael Bennett, who I thought was a terrific player Absolutely, last year. He, he tore his knee up and didn't play against USC. And, you know, their offense looked good, piled up 545 yards and 35 points against Clemson, but did lose. Right. Why did they lose? Their offensive line, to be blunt, was terrible. Left tackle Canarius Gates looked like a turnstile. He was allowing Clemson's guys like Vic Beasley to come around that end unchecked, smacking Murray all around. They hit him early, and he got happy feet late. You know, yeah. He had good numbers, but he was hitting his guys late, throwing it high, throwing it low, forcing them to come to the ball instead of hitting them in stride. And I think USC looked at that and just saw a glaring, blinking light saying this is the opportunity to go and beat these guys this Saturday. I don't think there's any question they'll come after Aaron Murray for – for my key to the game, key player for the game, it's South Carolina quarterback Connor Shaw, who, you know, just kind of keeps doing his thing under the radar. It's got nothing to do with the fact that he's a Georgia kid, but that's to do with what he did to Georgia last year. In the first quarter alone, he scrambled for four first downs. And I think that just, from my perspective, you could tell that that just demoralized that Georgia defense. They would play good coverage. They'd feel like they had things under control, and he'd spin out and get a first down, and you're still on the field. And I thought that that was the biggest factor in the game. And I think his mobility, if he can steal some first downs like that, he can have the exact same impact. What are your keys, David? I tell you, Josh, there's a lot of uh, you know, key players that you can look right. at. And despite you know, what we've already talked about with uh, Georgia's left tackle, Canarius Gates, and how he's going to face Clowney and, and Chaz Sutton this year, I still got to go back to those freshman middle yeah. linebackers. I thought Kwan Lewis and really Sky Moore played great mm -hmm. against North Carolina. Well, now they're going to be facing a whole different beast and a guy like Todd Gurley. You know he's going to get the ball. You right. know he's going to get his yards. And the fact is, he's the kind of kid that you're not necessarily afraid to tackle him, but once you do tackle him, you're going to be feeling it. So, uh, you know, Sky Moore, John Walton, uh, Larence Bryant, all those guys are just going to have to stay in their gaps because you know Gurley's going to be charging at them sooner or later, and they're going to have to at least slow him down enough 
to get him down or, you know, let somebody else hit him. Because I tell you, Josh, if he gets to the secondary, he's probably going to be able to outrun anybody that the Gamecocks could throw at him. He's quick. And you, miss, you, you mentioned the interior. For South Carolina, the interior of the offensive line is also a question with Cody Waldrop's injury. Probably the most important injury issue to look at as we move forward in the week. Yeah, the injuries uh, have cleared up a little bit. The good news is Bruce Ellington's 100%. Busta Anderson seems to be close to 100%. Both those guys are going to play. But then Vic Hampton was in the yellow jersey early right. this week. Doesn't seem to be that serious, but he was pretty beaten up from the North Carolina game. I think he'll be okay. But as you mentioned, center Cody Waldrop, who has basically spent every – practice day since T.J. Johnson left, being groomed as the starting center and played well against North Carolina, has a sprained foot. He was on crutches at, on Tuesday night at practice, and if he can't go, it's going to be up to Clayton Stadnick, another redshirt freshman, never taking a snap in a game, and he's going to have to go play center. That's going to be a huge, huge that part if Cody Waldrop can't play. And the fact is, where I'm getting a few people on Twitter saying, I'll just give him a pain shot, he'll be fine. Got 10 games after this. Yeah. You don't want to take that chance right now. You can't start shooting guys up just to get them, just to get them in this game. All right, now I guess we're down to, you know, finally they're going to make us pick this one again. As you <laughs> mentioned, we don't have necessarily the most stellar track record in this, at least in predicting whether it's going to be a low-scoring game or a high-scoring game. I'll go first this week, and so a lot of our folks who are watching know I picked Georgia to win this game at the beginning of the year when I picked the season long. As you were watching the game in Clemson, the Georgia offensive line, which I thought, and I think a lot of people thought was going to be a strength for that team, was not. And if they can't block South Carolina's defensive line, if they can't give Aaron Murray a chance to get comfortable and to get some confidence in a big game, which he does not seem to have at this point, they're not going to have a chance to win, I don't think. I'll take South Carolina 24-21. I still think it'll be close, but I'm not sure that when, it, you know, when it's important, Georgia can block South Carolina. Josh, I couldn't agree more, especially after watching their offensive line was just bad, and that was going against the Clemson defense that has not been known for right. you know making a big stop. Absolutely. What are they going to do when they face a guy like Clowney and Sutton, and especially with Clowney against Aaron Murray, who he's basically made his whipping boy over the past two years? You know, I know he's going to have happy feet, and the fact is, is that I was kind of going back and forth on this on on this game since it is between the hedges, mm -hmm. and Georgia does have that dynamic offense, but I got to say, you know. After watching Georgia at Clemson, South Carolina will win this game. I was going to also take 24-21. to 21, okay, That's all right. You can still have it. Let's go 27-24. Uh, South Carolina will get it. And, hey, I'm a little more confident that uh, South Carolina can make a field goal after Elliott Fry did so well in his first game. Didn't know Gamecocks 27-24. No question. That's it for us this week. We will be here at GoGamecocks.com the rest of the week and Saturday for sure. So check back for updates.